Good morning and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader, and I'm joined today by Alexis of Total Life Wellbeing. She is a uh, burnout recovery coach, which is really interesting. And we're going to dive deep, well, deep today into what exactly that is and how that can help small business owners. How are you today, Alex? Um, well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Excited no. to be here. <laughs> oh, I'm just excited because this is something we haven't really dived um, deep into in the podcast yet. The the burnout recovery and how that can be a process um, for small business owners, knowing that there's support in being able to uh, identify and work their way out of that burnout mode that can get to us and does at times, but sometimes really deeply. So introduce yourself and let us know um, how you got into the space of of um, coaching in that realm? Yeah, so um, I am Alexis and I am a health and wellbeing coach and my focus at the moment is on burnout prevention and recovery. So I support people um, both with strategies to prevent burnout but also to heal from chronic stress and burnout. And the way I have got to where I am now is having gone through the experience myself uh, I hit major burnout, I would call it, in 2016. And, you know, upon reflection, I think I'd sort of cycled through, you know, numerous mini burnouts in the lead up to that for the best part of a decade, um, working in frontline roles um, that, you know, in which I was exposed to quite a bit of vicarious trauma. So it was a combination of um, living a very sort of fast paced and busy life being that kind of person that people, um, you know, go to, but, you know, in my personal life and also professionally, so supporting and kind of giving, giving, giving without recharging myself. Um, and then certain kind of, you know, workplace factors that, you know, I was effectively kind of powerless to change. So when all of these things kind of accumulated over 10 years time, I hit major burnout and it was a big sign that something needed to change. So after having gone through that experience myself and once the dust had settled, I became super passionate about helping other people, uh, you know, go through um, the experience of, of healing and burnout recovery using some of the tools that I was able to learn. And that's what I currently share in my business um, model at the moment. Yeah, I love that because what happens is when I work with my clients on their why in creating a business, a lot of it comes from an experience, a journey, something that mm. has happened within our own lives that has mm. given us that passion to help and support others. And you, the deeper you dive into that, yet the more you can find something in a business that lights you up. Um, and I can see that, that that is for you where you've now settled in that realm because you can know the difference it makes and the the people that you would have liked to have had in your corner probably at the beginning when you were maybe experiencing that first signs of burnout that yeah, that maybe could absolutely. have um, yeah and you know those signs now which is um which is a wonderful uh you not that you wanted to have to go through it but a teaching tool now for others and yeah. we wanted to to talk about what leads firstly to exhaustion and burnout because I know we these words are bandied around a lot, but it it is um, super important to know the signs because you know mm. your nervous system once it actually hits burnout, it's you know a, a hard road back. So you want to be able to you know pinpoint those signals to begin with. So what did you find through your journey or, or when you're coaching now mm. with clients? Yeah, so I think there are a number of different things that lead to a state of sort of chronic exhaustion or burnout. And I will just say up front, you know, I feel like the term burnout just gets thrown around quite loosely at the moment. Um, whereas what I'm talking about and what I'm supporting my clients with in my coaching program is a real, you know, sort of high level prolonged chronic stress that has culminated in burnout so it's kind of the end of the road you've hit absolute rock bottom and it's a state of complete um you know psychological physical exhaustion um so it's more than kind of just taking a day off for self-care or you know having a week off work we're looking at you know the root causes what has actually um predisposed me to being you know affected by burnout and what are some of the things that I can kind of change in my personal life and um, perhaps in my professional life and my work environment as well. So some of the workplace factors 
include um, work overload, so having too much on the plate. Um, that is um, an, an unreasonable amount um, for any one person to be able to manage, which is quite common in the, the healthcare professionals and some of the human services roles that I've worked in as well. Um, exposure to vicarious trauma, I think that's a big one as well. So, um, you know, this is where, you know, people in the frontline roles uh, seeing, witnessing and not able to kind of process their experience. So those um, unprocessed sort of emotions and experiences just kind of get bottled up and the experience of burnout is that, you know, all of this sort of stuff comes to the surface. It has to be um, acknowledged at some point. Those emotions need to be worked through and resolved. Um, excessive work hours as well and a lack of control and autonomy in the workplace and in people's roles as well as um, in some workplaces, it can be a matter, a matter of toxicity in the workplace. So um, kind of dysfunction in working relations or mm -hmm. perhaps might be bullying and um, harassment happening in the workplace um, or just a general sort of poor workplace culture where um, people are not sort of valued, recognised and really kind of nurtured and cared for. And I think that is a really big part of, of the change that I would like to create is seeing workplaces acknowledge that, you know, we have a, a legal and ethical um, responsibility to employees to protect and support, you know, their mental health and physical well-being as well, protect people from burnout because it is a risk factor and a hazard. So some of the personal factors that can lead to burnout include unmanaged stress. So for me, it was definitely a matter of acknowledging that yes the job that I was working in was stressful but I wasn't actually managing that stress effectively myself I was using some pretty unhealthy you know coping mechanisms to manage that stress and that's not an uncommon one for the people that I support my coaching program as well so learning healthier ways of coping and managing stress a lack of social support can also lead to burnout so that might look like you know having a lack of um of quality or meaningful relationships. So we might be surrounded, you know, in a room full of people, but still feeling quite disconnected and isolated from those people. So, you know, depth of connection and real quality relationships is super important um, in recovering from burnout. Learning to rely on and trust other people as well, reaching out for help. That was something that I was not good at. And I really had to learn to just shed that bit of the ego and acknowledge like, hey, I'm struggling. I'm actually drowning in this over here and I really need someone to, to help me out. I'm needing a life raft. And in fact, I need, you know, a bunch of people, even though they were right there, I wasn't very good. I was used to being the fixer, the doer myself. <laughs> so yes. that thing of acknowledging that I wasn't actually doing so well and that I needed the support was huge and life-changing. Yep. And, it's and, you, and you'll find that with small business owners in particular, if you have staff too, that you tend to feel like you have to be the one that continues to be strong and the one that says that everything's okay. But we have to realise, like in the book by Brene Brown in Dare to Lead, where she says a lot of that vulnerability enables your staff to know that they too can ask for help. And I think that that is changing in the environments now in leadership. And yep. I'm hopeful that that will continue to change in the younger generation coming up now so that we don't have to be this stoic small business owner that um, you know cannot say that they're struggling for their staff or just even for their partners and things because yeah taking it on all by yourself is is a one-way track to burnout for sure so yeah I think that that's really important now in workplaces for sure. Yeah that's right and and you're spot on I think it is uh, being willing to be vulnerable yourself is what actually opens the door to those, you know, other courageous conversations happening. You know, people know that, hey, I'm not alone in this. And actually this person who I see, you know, in um, in all of their glory in a very sort of, you know, well-rounded and finished way, actually they've gone through quite a bit of hardship or they might be, you know, struggling kind of day to day. And it's actually okay for us to acknowledge that and to normalise that um, yeah. so that we can... Uh, yeah, certainly prevent burnout and support those struggling from burnout. Um, so in terms of the other personal factors, yeah, there are, it's a lack of social support. Also personality factors might uh, make us more vulnerable to experiencing burnout. This was a big one for me and that was perfectionism. Mm -hmm. um, the research also shows that perfectionism is kind of the number one personality factor that leads to, to burnout. Um, and that's kind of, 
you know, pretty self-explanatory. If we have these really high expectations and high standards um, of ourselves, it's a recipe for disaster and we need to learn to um, be okay with imperfect and to acknowledge that um, oftentimes, you know, perfectionism is about a sense of control. You know, if I do all of these things and I do them to a really high standard and I make sure that everything in life, you know, the boxes are ticked and the, the T's are crossed and, you know, the I's are dotted, that things will work out. And then going through the experience of burnout, you know, life is kind of crumbling beneath you and you realise, well, actually there's no amount of perfect in this that that could have helped me, you know, and that I need to be able to effectively let go of those expectations and those really kind of, um, yeah, harsh ideals really. And, and the fact that this is unrealistic as well to expect these things of ourselves. Yeah, and we also, um, from another point of view that's coming prevalent now is energetics and, and how everyone has a different way that their body deals with um, work and stress. And mm. I know recently human design starting to come into the small business world on, on how people can use their energetics, um, you know, manifesting generators, go, 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 that works for mm. them. But people say, like myself, a projector, we're not that type of energetics and we tend to sit back and, um, you know, produce things and invite people towards us. So so having yeah. um, an idea of how you work, whether it's your personality type, like you say, or whether it's something yeah. more human design, whatever works for you and yeah. having an acknowledgement of how maybe you can best manage that, um, I think is, as you say, a, a good a good thing to at least keep an eye on because there is ways you can work through that. Yeah, and that is a great point. Um, that is me, the manifesting generator, actually. So that I think those types okay. are quite, yeah, quite, you know, go, go, go. and got the ideas and got the energy, but it's that, you know, how do I kind of sustain this? And yeah. for me, that has been through creating this business, you know, a business that is based around my own, you know, personal well-being and self-care and a business that allows me to thrive and prioritise my own health and well-being first whilst not burning myself out. And I'm, I'm sure that I will never get to that place again because of what I've been able to put in place through these learnings and through the, the experience of having gone through that. Yeah, and that, and I was the same with realizing I was a projector and trying to keep up with manifesting generators in, you know, creating offers and programs and things. Realizing that my energetics was not based around that; it was based around being like that lighthouse of knowledge and allowing people to come into that realm and work with, as opposed to go, 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 push out. So cool. yeah, and that changed me completely in how I put together things now. So I think yeah, you're right. Once you have an idea of what that is, you can work around it, and it will work for you as opposed to that push mentality of trying to go against it to keep up with everyone. And then you burn out because it's not how you work. Totally. That's exactly right. And I think that probably brings me to my last point about um, the things that can lead us to exhaustion or to burnout. For me, you know, it goes beyond just these workplace factors and the personal factors, but actually about a state of disconnection. And I think, you know, there's three parts of that for me would be disconnection from self, disconnection from others and disconnection from the world around us. And in terms of being disconnected from yourself, what I mean by that is about um, being disconnected from, you know, a state of awareness. So if you're not aware of like you talk about with the human design stuff or with personality factors, you know, how do I do my best work? You know, what do I need to do to allow myself to flourish and thrive versus what are the things that are going to cause me to burn out if I'm sort of working against myself and trying to keep up with everyone else when actually I'm quite different and unique in my own gifts and abilities. Um, uh, yeah, also having kind of misaligned values or being out of alignment with our values. For me, you know, some of my biggest values are about, you know, health, balance, well-being, while the state that I, you know, got to through burnout was completely out of alignment with all of those things. I wasn't practicing my values. I wasn't practicing balance and slowing down and recognizing you know, my own internal compass within myself. How am I feeling? When am I doing too much versus when am I doing not enough? That state yeah. of procrastination I, I versus love... a state of overwork and overdoing. What's yeah. that happy medium and that middle ground and how can I kind of, you know, hang out in that space um, rather than those extremes of too much or not enough? Yeah, I love that because um, when I do work with my clients on their why and um, a lot of that encompasses core values and creating them in their business when they're startup phase um, or level up phase because it's important to get back to that compass, which is what I refer to in my trainings of how do you know if you're out of alignment? 
and yeah. your core values will always bring you back um, yes. to where you need to be towards your overall vision. And I think that's what keeps us engaged. As long as we're continuing on that vision of what we want for our business, we're more likely to be <clears throat> aligned and, and happy. Um, mm-hmm. And our body will tell us when we're out. And that compass of, you know, what will you stand for and what won't you stand for in your business? Yeah. Um, if that's set, um, and it's aligned with your your overall vision, you'll always uh, come back to it. And I think that's so important that people forget. They just go, go, go. And they mm-hmm. don't set boundaries for themselves. And the boundaries are where your energetics will um, either uh, work with you or against you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So um, so nextly, why, why isn't talk therapy enough uh, when it comes to treating burnout? For, uh, you know, wh- why is that not enough these days? Yeah, so this is an interesting one because that is uh, my training is in talk therapy. So um, I've got two degrees in psychology. I've I've trained, um, you know, as a clinician for many many years now, and um, and I really do see the benefit in talk therapy. And, and what I mean by that is traditional approaches like you know CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, which is sort of the gold standard in psychology, or you know motivational interviewing and other type of talk therapy. However these are not so effective for somebody who is in a full-blown state of burnout. So um, when we see a therapist quite often times we're recounting what has happened to us and in that sense we're actually re-traumatizing the body because we are remaining in a um, state of fight or flight and nervous system activation Mm -hmm. and what we actually need to start healing from burnout is the opposite of that we need to um, activate the relaxation response calm down the nervous system first calm down the brain and then we can actually come into a state of being able to think clearly and problem solve and strategize but in those um, sort of beginning phases of burnout recovery um, we're really looking at two components um, of burnout one is the um, psychological state and the other is the physiological state so with addressing the psychological state that's where talk therapy might come in so we look at things like the personality traits maybe human design um, compassion fatigue things that you know the context of the situation what's actually gone on here what's led me to get to where you know I am now for me I remember in my first session with a psychologist it was looking at self-sacrifice you know as a as a factor um, and um, something that had kind of yeah that I had taken on to kind of you know I'm, I'm so happy to put everybody else's needs first and my needs last so how do we look at kind of addressing those factors that sort of stuff can only happen when we like I say go back to working with the body first so addressing things like adrenal fatigue which had come up for me that was how I first found out that I had this thing called burnout and it was through a naturopath. I'd been to um, several GPs. I'd been to other medical professionals. No one could really tell me, you know, what was happening. It was like, well, you're well within, you know, the realm of what's normal and everything's okay at a physical level. And it, and I knew on a really deep intuitive level, like things are not okay. Um, mm-hmm. I'm completely fried, you know, exhausted. Every little cell in my body felt tired. So I knew there's something more to this picture. And that led me to seeing a naturopath and she was the one that really started talking to me about nervous system overwhelm and adrenal fatigue. You know, what happens after, you know, the body remains in a state of chronic stress for the best part of a decade, perhaps even longer. If I think back to some other pretty big things that had kind of happened earlier than that in my own life, you know, what happens when the body remains in that stress state for such a long time and those things are not resolved or addressed um you know there's not there's no healing taking place because it's just one stress after the next and they kind of vary in their intensity but they're all really adding up and accumulating at the end of the day and this can tip our hormones out of balance our hormones govern every other system in our body so all the other systems become tipped out of balance as well so that was huge for me to kind of go through that that journey of um, understanding what actually happens on a physical level as well the nervous system level in burnout so that led me to my own um, I guess self-exploration in burnout recovery and I went on a journey of you know movement meditation and mindset which is the model that I currently use in my business at the moment Um, that involved yoga teaching I started to um, 
teach, well, I would studied yoga teaching, not with the intent of ever teaching yoga, which I do ironically now, but it was really to integrate that more into my daily life as a, as a habit, because I knew that this was finally something that allowed me to slow down and pause and go within and be okay with that. That took a lot of adjusting um, to be okay with that stillness, but it was also something that I really felt gave back to me on an energetic level. I could sense deep healing and repair happening within my own body and mind. And it was something that, yeah, that gave back to me and allowed me to kind of go on. Um, the meditation was really important as well. Being able to sit still and actually go within and explore, you know, what was happening within my body and within my mind and yeah, be okay with that sense of you know there's nothing to do here there's nothing to fix nothing to solve I'm just here I'm being you yeah know, I think I think that's here. one of the things that as a small business owner in particular that we tend to think well I can't waste time doing that I've got other things to do mm -hmm. I've got a program to launch I've got socials to put up you know this is not you know getting me any money yep. but what we've got to realize is that by not doing that we're just doing ourselves a disservice which is doing our clients a disservice and we need to it's like the whole mother thing isn't that you got to look after yourself first before you start mm. giving back to anyone it's the same with a small business it's just like another baby another child it's like you got to look after yourself so you can look after it I know I struggle with that and yoga um, it was something that helped me and also now even just having a PT twice a week just mm. knowing that twice a week in my calendar blocked off, I know that I'm doing something to strengthen myself to give back. And I think yeah. it's whatever it works for you, isn't it, in that regard? Mm. So, so when we're talking about things they can do, what actions can the listeners take that, that you found works? Like what can they do right now if they're struggling with burnout? Is there something that they can explore or look at that you found that works from people you've been supporting or yourself for that matter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's it's an important um, conversation is to recognise that actually, you know, we are powerful creatures, we're powerful human beings and we're capable of making change. And I think recognising that burnout is a sign that something needs to change. That was, you know, it doesn't need to be a complete burnout. You know, you may be on the road to burnout or really starting to kind of feel these um, symptoms of, you know, chronic stress and exhaustion, but recognising that, you know, I've got a choice here and I'm, I'm, you know, I can make some decisions, whether that be about the workplace or what happens in my personal life or changing up my environment in some way. So... I think two questions to ask yourself if this is um, something that you're struggling with and you're this is, you know, you're identifying with some of this stuff is, you know, firstly, what does life look like if I don't change? Um, and, and you will know the answers to that, to that question, you know, just let that kind of percolate, you know, what does life look like in five years time if I don't implement some sort of change to create some lifestyle balance and positive changes in my own health and well-being? And then on the flip side of that is, what does life look like if I do change and if I'm actually able to be supported to sustain these changes? Um, quite oftentimes, the people that I'm working with have been, they know what they need to do. You know, we, we're quite self-aware in this um, day and age and where, you know, there's lots of different tools and strategies and people are generally pretty good at recognising, you know, what are the things I like doing? What are the things that help me to feel good? What are the things that help me to feel balanced, grounded, connected? So it's just, you know, being able to prioritise these things. And for me anyways, it was recognising like, hey, I can't actually do this all alone. Mm -hmm. Doing it alone is what had got me into this problem in the first place. So it was recognising, hey, it's okay to admit that I'm burnt out. Um, secondly, it's okay to put my hand up and, and let people know that I'm, I'm not doing so well. And thirdly, I'm going to ask for some support and where do I go to actually access that support? So changes to your environment, this could look like um, addressing workplace factors. So if the, you know, workload is too high, then talking to a manager about that, you know, hey, there's way more than I'm able to do. There's not enough hours in the day and this is actually unmanageable for me. Being, feeling confident to actually have those conversations and if it's not with a direct, you know, line supervisor or manager, perhaps it's, um, it might be somebody in HR who could um, help you kind of navigate what a 
better balance in the workplace might look like for you. Um, and I'm cautious as well of that I've kind of talked to, you know, the professional kind of working environment, but also burnout, I'm very aware, happens in the home as well. So, you know, for mums, this might be um, a reality as well. How do you kind of change your environment or set some boundaries so that you can remove or manage some of the, the stressors or the things that are contributing to burnout within the home? Um, that might look like asking for support, you know, um, asking for somebody else to step in, organising um, some different childcare arrangements so that you don't have to take all of it on yourself. Um, and then as well for people in business, um, for small business, you know, we're working away at home. This is a big one for me and I certainly don't have it all, all figured out, um, even though this is my area of expertise. It's a constant check-in with myself. Um, you know, where is that internal compass and my internal thermometer? Am I doing too much? Am I actually um, going beyond my boundaries and working on weekends when I really shouldn't be, you know, that might be removing notifications on the phone or taking off emails off the phone or whatever it is that helps you really protect your own time when you have designated time off and actually scheduling that in, you know, on a Monday for half the day, I do my yoga, I do my meditation, I do my self-care check-in before I give to anybody else, before I start my week, before I give to my baby, to my business, you know, to my family, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, X, Y, Z, the list goes on. Yeah. And the, and the, have thing, that. Yeah. the thing I found as well as with small business owners um, or, or just even with myself, realizing that outsourcing may be the way forward as well. The idea mm -hmm. that we either can't afford or we don't want to outsource work is actually holding us back a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So by outsourcing to people in their zone of genius and knowing that it's being done right allows you to then move forward in other parts, which then allows you to get there quicker mm -hmm. and allows you to not hit that part where you're burnt out and you hate your business because you're in it all the time and you're not working on it there needs to be a limit but sometimes and I found that by outsourcing recently that um, mm. certain aspects of the business that allowed me to feel freer and love my business again to then be able to work on it and build it so it's the same as in your home isn't it sometimes if the cooking or if the housework is overtaking everything whilst you're trying to build a business maybe it's time to look at how do you get support in that realm uh, you know whatever it is that's doing it yeah you're right it's just a matter of identifying it and looking at is there a way that I can get support in certain aspects to allow me to uh, once again fall in love with my business or to allow me to grow it in a in a quicker rate than I would do if I was bogged down trying to do it all and be a martyr mm -hmm. and um, you know be the person who has to do everything at home or in business or both yeah exactly and I think that's a really good point is having that level of of self-awareness and having those honest conversations with yourself first and then your support team around you to look at how can I shift this balance what's not working for me and whether that be in your business um, you know, writing up that list of things that I um, love doing, things that I don't love doing and things that I absolutely can't stand doing. And the can't stand doing, you know, if that means, yeah, outsourcing for some support in those areas, you know, whether it be, you know, finances or whether it be social media or the other things that your body is telling you as that very wise compass, which, you know, gets much more direct um, information and much more clear information often than our, um, our mind does, just checking in and going, what feels heavy? What feels hard? You know, um, if it's housework at home and in a home situation, I'm just talking to <laughs> my own situation here. It's like, okay, I'm going to outsource that and get some support there because I do not love doing that. And that makes, it brings up feelings of, you know, this is too much. I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling resentful about, you know, staying home. It's like, I want to be present and be with my child. You know, I'm happy to do the, the maintenance, but I want to, you know, feel good in my home. And if that means having someone in to do a deep clean once a month, then that is what I want to, you know, focus on um, and make sure that I've, I've got that support, whether it be in business, you know, making sure that you've got the things that, you know take you away from your zone of genius like you were talking about mm. how can I get some support for those because sure enough you know when we do the things that light us up when we do the things that you know 
that we set out to create the business for, you know, the, the why, the passion and the yeah. purpose, that is where we will see, you know, ease and, um, and flow happening in other areas of our life and certainly within our business so yeah because you're going to show up as the best version of yourself and the best version of you is the passionate one that loves what they do and people yes. love to work with people that they can see a journey that they can join or that they trust and they like so if you're not showing up as that person because you're overwhelmed which was probably me maybe three four months ago before I outsourced I had no time to show up I didn't want to yeah. show up because I had so many other things I had to do so you're just doing yourself a disservice so you're thinking you're, you're doing the right thing but in the end the outsourcing allows you to be free which allows you to show up which allows you to be in your zone of genius and that's how you make your business grow so it's a hard choice though it's not easy um you know especially yeah. when you're in startup phase which is a lot of the listeners are you know to to actually outsource um cost money so yeah. you know it's trying to find that support and knowing which in particular areas to start outsourcing as you said that task list is always the best way to do it which ones yeah. light you up which ones um can you delegate and which ones can you not do at all uh, you know, yeah. try not to do everything. Um, you know, don't be on every platform. Don't do every single thing that everybody tells you to do. Don't have 5 million offers when really you can have three offers yeah. that you can nail and really promote well. You know, mm -hmm. those sorts of things, you can get help and support in finding what that is. Um, but yeah, I think that's the most important, the important thing. Now, yeah. I want people to realize how they can work with you because I know you've got a burnout retreat um, help, helping those going through burnout and you do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So let me know all about that and how people can get um, a hold of you in regards to either of those. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I've got a women's wellbeing retreat coming up in Mandra at the Seabor Hotel this weekend. And we have currently sold out for that retreat. However, um, I've been yet yeah, absolutely um, blown away by the interest in this considering we've just moved here and people kind of don't know me from a bar of soap so I'm so grateful to the women that have um, taken the leap of faith and will be joining me for that really beautifully nourishing day um, and because we've got a couple of people on a wait list as well I've actually decided to run a second retreat which will likely be on Saturday the 15th of October so the best way for people to find out more information would be to um, jump into my Instagram DMs and just send me a message with your name and email address and I will add you to the list and let you know the details for that upcoming wellbeing retreat and um, otherwise you could send me an email at alexis at tlwellbeing.com.au and I will keep you in the loop with upcoming dates. Those will be the final two retreats for this year because I'm due to have second baby in December but I will be getting back into things at some point next year when the time feels right for me and for my family. I've also got a one-on-one -on -one coaching program for women experiencing chronic stress and burnout. So if you would like more information on that, again, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook Messenger, whatever your preference, um, or an email, and I will send you some more information there. You could also check out my website, which I believe will be in the show notes. And uh, yeah, all of the information is there uh, about upcoming events and retreats as well. Awesome. Awesome. Because I think uh, this is something that if you're either realizing that there's something not right and, and you really need to work a bit deeper on that in regards to burnout, um, these are the perfect opportunities to do that before you get to that stage where you you yeah it, it's bad so we want to get into that before you hit that stage and you're realizing that the signs are coming so these are perfect ideas and ways to get information and um, I will put the Instagram Facebook and website uh, links in the show notes and um, so that they can find you easily um, if not you can just google total life well-being I imagine as well and those uh, will, will show up it's been awesome chatting, Alexis. It's just um, it's just such an important topic, and I, and I just think the more people sometimes just take even a second to think about how they feel inside, and 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 if any of these things are hitting home, to to get the support because we both know that um, you know majority of especially small business owners in this realm 
mm. um, are feeling it at certain times and yeah. and um, networking or finding people within your realm is another way of just you know having those um, honest chats and making sure you're not alone because yeah. I think people work from home a lot more now do feel isolated and I think mm. as a small business owner that can be really tough Absolutely. so making those online online connections making sure you attend networking events if you can to know that you're not alone and that these feelings you're feeling are very very common yeah. and that there are ways to get support in these um these ways and especially by reaching out and um talking to you if you have any of these issues uh it's been awesome um congrats on baby number two coming and i'm sure that uh everything will be amazing and i hope that the uh the next retreat is just as popular as uh, this one and that everyone gets around it because i think it's really important so yeah. thank you so much and i will um see you soon Thanks so much, Nicola. Thanks for having me. Bye.